All right, guys, we got two minutes left. Two minutes, two minutes until we go go for it here with uh, Model Mania 2021. So this is definitely the, uh, the moment before the challenge is revealed. It always feels the same way. It's very, uh, you get very emotional. <laughs> I feel like, uh, like I'm super hyper, like all the coffee that I drank today is all brewing up. Uh, it's adrenaline, like you do get a little bit of an adrenaline kick. And the trick is to just kind of try to take a deep breath. <gasps> kind of balance yourself. Um, this is the same thing that happens when you're in line at the booth and when they hand you the print and when they hand you the, the, the uh, model. Ow! Hey, what's up, guys? What we're looking at here is a recording from last week. Last week, we held the 3D Experience World 2021 virtual conference. And part of that conference is the annual modeling challenge known as Model Mania. Now, although I can't officially compete in this challenge, I thought it would be really cool to record myself doing it live. When I hit record, I didn't know if I was gonna get the answer right. I didn't even know if I was gonna finish the challenge. But I thought you would really enjoy kind of watching over the shoulder of a certified SolidWorks expert to see how they think through a challenge like this. Let's get into it, see how I did. Uh, it's adrenaline, like you do get a little bit of an adrenaline kick. And the trick is to just kind of try to take a deep breath. <gasps> and kind of balance yourself. Um, this is the same thing that happens when you're in line at the booth and when they hand you the print and when they hand you the, the, the uh, model. It's actually a little bit more stressful this time around because you don't get the opportunity to look at the print for like a minute ahead of time. You just, uh, uh, you just like right away have to jump into it. As soon as this thing goes to one, boom, people are going to be on the clock trying to finish this thing. So I don't know. We're going to see how it goes. I think the trick is just to stay balanced, you know, stick to your, uh, your best practice strategies. You know, we're going to look at the print. We're going to ask ourselves what should be the starting plane? What should be the starting profile? Um, you know, kind of back engineer the print. We're going to think to ourselves, how are we going to build this thing? Uh, I'll talk through a little bit of that, but honestly, I'm just going to put some music on and just kind of like go for it here. So uh, maybe I can maybe I can overdub after the video's done or something like that uh, if I if I have any good insights. Here we go. 30 seconds left. Uh, this is this is it, guys. This is it. This is that feeling. I'm sure everybody who's out there who's watching this, who's done this contest, knows that feeling. You feel it all through your chest and you feel it in your hands. And you're just worried that you're going to misclick. And that's the biggest worry. You just got to try to stick to your basics. So here we go, 10 seconds left. Uh, I'm gonna also hit play on my overlay here when it gets to like one second so that we have a clock going on my overlay. Go. Okay, here we go. So here's the print. Um, it looks like we've got the option to open this in a new tab. That's nice. Uh, looks like it's gonna be starting out on the top plane with this kind of uh, weird shape. I'll try to just do a quarter of it and mirror it twice. Uh, we'll, we'll see here that we have these kind of angled tombstone shapes. So I think my first feature is going to be the shape from the top, sketch on the top plane and create this kind of outer perimeter. Second feature is going to be the circle. Um, we do have symmetry here, so maybe I could just model half of it, but I'll probably just model the whole thing. Um, just because it doesn't really look like symmetry is going to get me too much from this. So that's going to be kind of the plan. I'm going to move this over to my second monitor. I'm going to put on some music. looks like the material is plain carbon steel. Good luck me. So this is it. Uh, we're, we are now officially in Model Mania modeling mode. Uh, this is where people I think get the most nervous is when they're making those first couple of clicks, those first couple of clicks in your first sketch. Uh, this is usually where I end up over clicking. Uh, you end up double clicking instead of single clicking just because you're so nervous or you, uh, you know, you miss a dimension. You go to dimension between two things and you just can't seem to, to dimension the correct areas. Um, it's just something where you got to just take a deep breath, calm yourself down and just try to stick to your basics. So in this case, I've decided that I'm going to model the clover and I'm going to do it by modeling a quarter and mirroring it twice. I'm actually using trim here as an extend shortcut to extend those center lines. And I'm hoping that's going to make it a little bit easier for me to mirror uh, in just a few steps. So now I need to go through and add some dimensions to the clover. I'm going to start by dimensioning the uh, double dimension to the, the corner of the clover, the center of those holes. And once I have that double dimension in there, I just need to find the radius dimension. And when you're doing model mania, you can never find the dimensions you need. Uh, so it just takes forever. Uh, here you can see I'm trying to find that large radius dimension on the print, which is on my other monitor. 
I can't find it. I have no idea what that radius is. And then uh, finally you end up kind of like locking in. You find that dimension and then you drop it in there. So here I'm going to uh, try to now mirror that. I didn't really get the payoff that I wanted from extending those lines. I was hoping I could just do a window select and get everything. I still had to end up holding control and getting the line, but there we go. Nice, fully defined sketch. And once I jump into the extrude command, I'm just going to type in 20, enter, enter, and I'm ready to move on. Now I notice that that circular post is starting from the bottom going up. So I'm going to sketch it on the top plane, but I can't auto dimension the circle because the darn dimension is off the print. I have to go to my second monitor and move the print. So lost a couple of clicks there because I couldn't auto dimension, but it's okay. I can just jump right into extrude, type in the height, enter, enter, and I'm ready to move on to the next feature. Stick to these basics. You can really save a lot of time, even when you run into little hiccups along the way. So I know this is a little unorthodox the way that I created this kind of angled tombstone shape here, but my thought was, you know what, I'm just going to fully define it by locking it to the central axis of that post. And if it's sticking out the top, I'll just do either a cut extrude or a delete face to clean it up. Uh, it'll, you know, it'll save me a little bit of finagling with uh, dropping that dimension on, an, you know, an imaginary value or just kind of randomly dropping it in the center. Um, you know, I probably could have done it a little bit quicker, but this is just the way that I decided to do it. When you're, uh, when you're under the gun like this, uh, a lot of times it's better just to pick a plan and stick to that plan uh, rather than maybe like backtracking and second guessing yourself. So here we can see, yep, I got faces sticking out the top, so I'm just gonna go insert face delete. Could have done that with a cut extrude too. Either way, gets me exactly to the geometry that I want. And so now you can see in the video, I'm hitting my first kind of oh crap moment in this challenge, uh, where I realized that the bottom of the model has been shelled uh, and it's uh, it's not necessarily shelled all the way through, certainly not through that angled tombstone that I just created. So this is definitely going to require a little bit of backtracking for me to clean this up. So I'm going to get in here, find the shell value of five, hollow out the underside, uh, and then I'm going to roll forward. I'm going to say, okay, this actually looks fine. You know, now all I got to do is a cut extrude, but then I'm going to look at the print again and realize that, uh, you know what, I'm, I'm actually missing something else here too. It's shelled around the holes that are in the corners here. Uh, so I'm going to also go through now and add those holes to the corner. Now, this is another one of these spots where it's like, could I just do one and mirror it twice? Or could I do four and make them all equal? Because I'm so quick with auto dimension, I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to wake up the center point, add those four holes, add them in with the, the 14 millimeter diameter, cut extrude them, roll forward, and I'm going to hope that the shell works. This time it did. I think maybe I got a little bit lucky on that one, but uh, it does look like it's working. And uh, I'm just going to go in now and add some fillets. Now, with the fillets, what you want to do here is click on one single edge and then hold your mouse over those little fillet shortcuts. And whatever shows up in magenta is going to become filleted. And then a little trick I do whenever I'm doing Model Mania is I actually change the color of the fillets. Uh, that way when I'm looking at the print, I can see if I got all the fillets uh, really easily. It's, it just makes it much easier to compare what you've got to the print because a lot of times uh, the print will have you know a similar color on the fillets. So now I'm looking at the print and I'm realizing I need to add a couple more fillets. And this is definitely one spot where I feel like I wasted a lot of time. Uh, when it comes to that kind of angled tombstone shape, I probably could have just picked one single face. And because of tangent propagation, I could have gotten everything. In fact, at the end there, you see I accidentally clicked on the face that I could have uh, saved a lot of time by selecting. So just remember, when it comes to doing a lot of filleting, really try to leverage tangent propagation because uh, it can save you a lot of time, a lot of extra clicks. 
In in that case, what you saw a moment ago, I just kind of went through and manually filled it by picking each edge. So I'm looking at the print, I'm looking at my model, uh, I'm feeling pretty good about everything. Uh, I think I even do a little little head nod here <laughs> so that I am, am uh, affirming that everything looks good. I think I'm ready to start getting in here now and doing the whole wizard hole. And what you want to remember with the whole wizard hole, especially when it comes to counter bores, is that uh, you can always show the, the custom sizing. And a lot of times that, that's very helpful to kind of confirm that what's on the print is what you're getting. So you see here I say show custom sizing. And now I can either uh, pick the hole from the, the menu or I can just even go in and manually type in the sizes. Uh, I use this a lot when I'm looking at the Model Monday live challenges, and uh, it's something that absolutely paid off here. I was able to really quickly get in there and get that hole and get it in as the correct size. Now, at this point, you know, that, that hole is not going all the way through, and the print is a little bit tricky, but basically on the other side here, uh, the face that I've selected, that's supposed to be 7 millimeters, and it's currently 9 so I thought about going in and doing an insert face move. That's the command I'm in right now. But then I backtracked and instead I just did a delete face. And the reason I did this was because I wasn't sure if the model was going to be graded based on the actual geometry. And so I thought there was a chance that uh, they would actually be grading the model based on, you know, did you actually go in and add the whole wizard feature with the threads? So just in case I decided to go through and do it the, the right way, um, if this was one of my challenges, I would have absolutely just done it with a move face and been done with it. But I wasn't sure what criteria they were going to be going on. And so I figured better safe than sorry. So I went in, used Hole Wizard, and added in the appropriate hole with cosmetic threads. So again, here I'm at the point where I feel like the model's looking pretty good, but something just looks off. And what that something is, is I was missing a fillet. And, and I think it's really because I had colored those fillets that I was able to quickly identify what was missing. I mean, on the print, the fillets are colored red. It just really makes it easy for me to do a quick comparison. So uh, now that I've got that final fillet in there, I, I'm really feeling good about this thing. I'm really feeling like this thing is ready to, you know, kind of take to the next step. So I'm going to launch my Simulation Express study here, and I'm going to go through, put in the appropriate fixturing. So in this case, we're being asked to fixture this on the four corners. And uh, then I'm going to be asked to input a force. So I'm going to add a force here. And when I go to add the force, I'm going to pick the cylindrical face, but to force in a direction. So I, I type in 10,000 Newtons. And then when I choose uh, in a selected direction, it reverts that back to one. Uh, and so that that definitely can trick you. It, that's that's caught me before uh, where it didn't have the correct force after I switched it to a selected direction. Uh, so if you're out there and that happened to you, you know, let me know in the comments. I'm with you. I feel you. Uh, that's definitely gotten me before. <laughs> Uh, so now I'm just like double checking, making sure that it's the correct material. It grabbed the material right from my model, so it's got the plain carbon steel. Uh, I think this thing's ready to go. It's ready to run. Uh, running through the simulation using the default mesh, I'm going to say, yes, it looks like it's deforming correctly. I'm going to say uh, that the factor of safety that is showing there is 3.0. And, and because I'm not actually uh, officially submitting this here, I'm just going to bring up a text document. So I'm going to say my factor of safety here is 3.07, uh, whatever it is there, 196. And then for my mass, I'm going to go into my uh, evaluate mass properties, and I'm just going to co copy that mass. And this is kind of like what you would do if you were submitting the form. Uh, so I'll say that the mass equals this. And then I'm just going to look back at the form because I think there was some uh, file naming criteria. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to do a, a save as and give it the appropriate name, uh, John Doe uh, Model Mania. Boom. I think that's it. Wait, I might have gotten the naming convention wrong. I'm looking for the form here to make sure that I got the correct naming convention for that uh, submission. So it uh, looks like it's actually supposed to be Acme Manufacturing. Okay. So you put your name, you put your company name, and then you save it, and then you submit the form. So I think that's it. Uh, I'm going to now go through, and I'm going to officially submit the form. Save. And, and uh, let's stop the, the clock. In here, and I would stop the clock. So it looks like 11.36. So we'll see if that's good enough. Uh, like I said, I can't actually do it. But, uh, okay, well, I'm not officially going to submit my results, but I did at that point kind of stop the clock as if I had submitted the results. 
I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that. I hope you enjoyed seeing the way that a certified SolidWorks expert would kind of think through a model mania challenge. You know, after the challenge is over, you get together in person, you you talk about your results with one another. Uh, you say like, oh, really? My factor of safety was so much higher. What did I miss? And uh, or, oh, I forgot to define one of my sketches. I didn't even realize that until after it was over. Uh, or I got stuck on part two and I couldn't even finish the challenge. You know, when you're live, you get all this cool interaction and there's even uh, kind of a, an additional twist to the challenge where there's a part two, a revision to the model. We didn't get to do any of that this year. You know, we, we got to do a little bit of uh, interaction afterwards on the chat boards, but it's definitely not the same as being in person. And I cannot wait to get together with everybody in person again. That being said, I hope you guys thought this was pretty cool. I didn't think there would be another opportunity to record myself doing Model Mania live. And I hope that I was able to share some tips and tricks with you. Let me know what you thought about this video down in the comments. Be sure to like, subscribe, and of course, share this video with other SOLIDWORKS enthusiasts. And hey, maybe I'll see you next year at 3D Experience World. Take it easy, everybody. Let's introduce our champions here. So our third place user champion is Rohit Mitra from SOLIDWISE. Our second place user champion is Clark Schaefer from Fox. Yeah. Martin. Yeah, Clark. And our first place user champion is Timothy Zalewski wow. from PAR Systems with a MZ. time of 10 minutes and 42 seconds. Great job. That's pretty fast. And that, and that time was the fastest of the entire contest. By the way, we had over 400 and, and 440 people uh, compete this year. So, world, world record.